you for joining me. No I am problem. here. With, I'm here with Erica Dunlap, the owner and proprietor of Erica the Goddess Photography. And I met Erica in Dallas. Actually, I met you online. How did we even wind up in that group for the Sisterhood of the Traveling Lens? And I'll explain um, what that is in a minute. <laughs> We ended up in that group because of um, Gail and Nika. Yes. I have become so, really close to okay. Nika. Yeah, Gail and, and Nika Smith. Nika Smith is a photographer and a genealogist. Mm -hmm. um, she does a lot of genealogy work and I'll actually throw the link in the description. And then Gail O'Bannon is another photographer, but she also worked at the time, I don't know if she still does, for the Dallas Mavericks, and she was also a photographer, and just they put together this whole weekend of Black women photographers coming together, doing workshops, and you are where I learned to jump into flash photography, because before, I was like, oh, I'm going to be a natural light photographer, because <laughs> woo, 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 and not that there's anything wrong with that, but whenever I would like look up people on YouTube to learn flash, it was like, okay. And so you take this fraction and you divide it by 12 and this is your ISO. And based on that, that's your F stop. And you know, that meme where the woman's sitting there and all the like math equations are going on. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. And you, you did a flash tutorial that was so simple. I was like, this I can do this. I understand. <laughs> well, good. I'm so, glad. Yes, that was you. So question, because I ask everyone this. By everyone, I mean you're the second person I've asked this question in this interview series. <laughs> <laughs> what got you into photography and what specifically got you into doing a lot of flash fa slash fashion work? Um, I started photography. It's been a little over 10 years. And I was, um, I, a lot of my friends were in the creative sect. I had one friend who was doing photography and graphic design and another friend who had just photographed my daughter and I, he was doing photography. And so one day he was doing something around the studio and he stuck a camera in my hand. And hmm. I posed my friend and I was doing all these poses and she was like, what are you doing? I was like, just, just follow me, just follow me. And I hit the shutter. <laughs> And it was almost like it was fate. Like I knew mm -hmm. the moment that I hit that shutter that that was gonna be what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. I didn't know how, I didn't know any of that. Um, and I think I saved up for like a month and bought my first camera on Craigslist. Okay. So was my that love- Was that the D90? Huh? Was that the D90? No, that was the D40X. Oh, that was my first camera too. <laughs> yeah, it was the D40X, and the guy I saw, I bought it from. I don't think he had really used it. It was a, it was in really good condition, and I took another photographer with me. She had been doing it before I even started, and she was really cool. And she was like, "Yeah, I'll go with you." And she went with me, and I bought it. I think I paid four hundred dollars for it. Okay. And um. I, I got started immediately. My love for fashion came as a child. I always wanted to have my own fashion line. That was something that I've always wanted. I've always watched all of the um, fashion runway shows. Um, I've always been just immersed in it. I loved it. I drew clothes, not that I could draw very well, but I drew clothes and fashion to me was just, it was much more amazing when it was on black skin. And so, um essence magazine ebony magazine anytime it was any fashion fair fashion show or anything like that i would get videotapes my mom's friends would send so fashion was just always in my blood just and i have to capture it in my own way so i i think that's where my passion came from it but i love it fashion is awesome because you can do anything yeah it's limitless it's dope like it's so awful. And you get really like you got really I don't wanna I don't wanna use cliche terms, but we know what traditional fashion look like looks like, right? And you always included like a variety of not just skin tones, which I think is critical. Cause even when sometimes we're looking at like black fashion, um 
there's a phenotype, right? Uh, straight, nat- you know, straight, relaxed hair, more, you know, features that are a little skewed towards European, um, you know, browner hair complexion, things like that. And you had one of the pictures I remember very vividly, and it's not one of the ones you sent me, but it's one of the ones that always comes to mind whenever I think about you. It was this beautiful bald sister. Yeah. Yes, I think you know which one I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. And it was just like, whoa, right? <laughs> like, I feel like for you, you do black fashion, but you also make sisters feel seen. Like all this, all the sisters, variety of body types. That's something else you don't see in fashion. And I know that there, there's this whole like body positive positivity movement out there right now, but even that tends to focus on white women, right? right. Where you were. I don't want to say that you're a body positive photographer because I think that is boxing you in a way that's not accurate, but you were more inclusive in ways that were ahead of the game compared to what everyone is trying to talk about body positivity now. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It it came from, I was a little chubby black girl. And so I didn't really see reflections of myself in things, especially not on TV, especially not in fashion at the time. I mean, even when you saw uh, black models and black designers and things like that, they all fit the mold. So I didn't see, I didn't see the beauty that I thought I should have seen. And one of the things that I, and I did it unconsciously, I, I think I just gravitated toward what I thought was beautiful. And Grace Jones was like the epitome of for me like she was oh people called her ugly oh she was black and all I saw was this statuesque beautiful dark-skinned black woman who gave zero fucks about yes. what anybody she, had to say she did she not so fear not at all amazing so I think that's kind of where it all came from and then you know being teased all my life and you know, trying to struggling with self-esteem and what society says is beautiful and, you know, kids in school being cruel because I was the bigger girl, I was dark, you know, going through all of that. So I think for me is that I automatically see the beauty in what people typically call flaws. Mm -hmm. You know, the girl with the gap, you know, the guy with the big lips or freckles, things like that to me are extraordinarily beautiful because people tend to take those things and pick at them because they can. And so Mm. why not, you know, try to find the beautiful aspects of a person through these things that to me are beautiful. They may not be beautiful to anyone else, but I want people to leave from in front of my camera knowing that even those things are beautiful. I like that. I love that. (laughs) I'm sorry. Okay, so I think no kidding. <laughs> but you know, seriously, like for real, like every shoot, we crying. Either it's my client crying, the model crying, or me crying. And I cry all the time. My last client uh, this past weekend, I looked at the back of the camera and I was just in tears. She was a plus size uh, person. And I haven't had very many, you know, I, I had some curvy girls, but she was curvy like me. Like she had big, you know, breasts. She was big girl. I was like, okay, let's get this pop. Let's make her feel (laughs) amazingly beautiful. And I'm sitting there tearing up and crying and she's crying. And then the other day I was working on editing and just, oh my God, I was just sitting in front of my computer bawling. And I don't even know if she going to feel the same way that I feel about it. But I was so, I was so much in love with her pictures. I was like, if she's beautiful to me, I know she's gonna feel beautiful when she see it, and that's what I want. That's the reaction I want. I want a mindset change to come from being behind in front of my camera. That's what I want. I want people, and especially women, to see themselves amazingly beautiful. So yeah, that's awesome. I love that. It's a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, help me out because it's been so long since we were able to touch base and life gets away from us. You know, you got married. I moved all over the place. I was working right. on a degree. And uh, yeah. For some reason, I know for a while you were trying to get published mainstream, but 
did you ever start or consider starting just your own fashion spread, like digitally and then branching out from there? Um, I thought about it, but I'm a Libra mm. and um, I tap dance around a lot of thoughts. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I saw so many people doing it that mm. I think I took a back seat because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to saturate. You talked yourself out of it. I did. I did. And then I said, okay, well, maybe I could use my voice a different way. And so I think, I think what I do is sometimes I get distracted by it because it's other people doing it. And then I conveniently sweep it in the back and then move on to something else. So that's not a good thing. That's a bad thing. It is. It is. But <laughs> I think that's what I did. I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to get started with something if I didn't feel like I could give it 150% of everything that I have to give. So it some ideas around that are coming back around. So we'll see. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. All right. Then. You might. You might. <laughs> you, you perked up a little bit. I saw it. I did. Like, oh. yeah. mm. So, so. Would it be fair to say that you started off in fashion and that's been kind of your trajectory or did you kind of think about branching out? Because the reason I ask is when we were, I looked this, I was looking for like the, there was an image that you, Gail and Nika took with um, the Mavericks photographer. Remember mm -hmm. when we were all in that house? So I found that image is going to be in this video. Okay. And we did a boudoir shoot that weekend. We mm -hmm. did a that weekend with the little ones. Um, and I've played around with doing different things. I never went back to boudoir because I just never felt confident enough to ask somebody. And it, it that it, that requires a lot of trust. And it's not that I'm not a trustworthy person, but it just feels weird to say, hey, can I, can I switch a, got a bit of compromise? Can I do that for you? No, <laughs> not that I would do it like that. That's totally creepy, but people do that. Anyway, um, but I, found that me personally, I am most comfortable when I'm kind of anonymous shooting. So that's why I've been shooting more conventions, like awesome con, like blurred con. If it's still on, depending on what's going on with this coronavirus thing, I'm supposed to be shooting San Diego Comic Con as press for the podcast that I do. Cool. Um, so, but that's me being kind of this anonymous shooter, as opposed to that intimate one-on-one -on -one that comes with fashion and that comes with portrait and things like that. Were you all, was that always your trajectory or did you ever think about doing other things more than you do the fashion? Um, I tried a few other things. I've tried the wedding thing. Not my thing. Um, you like prayers up, blessings to those who can do it. I mean, it's a skill. It's a it's a camera skill. It's a knee skill. It's a body yeah. skill that I don't yeah. have. I don't have it either. Me and these bad feet. And I, the last <laughs> wedding I did, I wore Converse. Big mistake. Big mistake. Dumb. Art dumb, support. dumb. Dumb. <laughs> no art support. What the heck? Girl. Oh, no. Look, I'm telling you, I almost had to be carried out of that wedding once it was over. I was in so much pain. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, so no weddings. Um, I think even when I try to do things um, outside of what I normally do, it brings me back to it. I have to have passion for what I do. And I, I can't, I haven't found anything more uh, fulfilling for me than portraits and fashion and mixing a little beauty into that. And <clears throat> that's something that I haven't really figured out what to name it yet because a lot of photographers will tell you, oh, you have to, this is what beauty is. This is what fashion is. This is what commercial is. This is what, you know, lifestyle is. And I think, I know one day I'm going to have to figure out how to differentiate that. But I think for now, I'm shooting what makes me happy and it may be a hodgepodge of beauty, fashion, editorial. I don't know what you call it. Um, what I can say that it's all me, you yeah. know, that that's the mm -hmm. only thing I can say. So I'm not sure what category I would fit in, but definitely portraiture and fashion or fashiony portraiture 
is my thing. Totally. Okay. And you do a lot and you, do you, I know you've worked with makeup artists and in, in some ways, I think you've done some makeup yourself. How did mm -hmm. you make those, how did you make those connections with those people? Um, you know, I never really thought about how I made those connections. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of the people that I'm friends with are kind of part of this whole creative um, community here in Memphis. We all, if we don't know each other personally, then we are all connected by a little degree of separation with other people. So when I started doing photography, a lot of my friends were just creative people. So Facebook kind of introduced people to me into my photography. I was already kind of um, someone that people kind of gravitated to in the creative arena because I was a spoken word artist. So mm. I did performances around the city, um, co-wrote some plays, did some things like that. So people kind of knew me through that, through my poetry. So I had, you know, connections with people who did stage makeup and, you know, up and coming people who were doing things. Uh, one of the first makeup artists that I actually worked with was a young lady I met and it was through poetry. She used to come to the poetry uh, readings all the time and she sang. Uh, her name was Delilah Blue. And I love that name. I know, and she's so gorgeous. Uh, she used to come and she started doing, she was doing her own makeup and she started doing it. And she did makeup for one of my first technically big shoots that was in my living room. And other makeup artists started seeing me, other designers, I started kind of introducing myself around. And then you make these connections and then you have all these people that you can call to do these things for you. So it's like super, super awesome. Cool. So, then, so you... I know I'm jumping around, but that's what I do. Oh, I find it's easy to jump around. Um, so you started with the Nikon D40. And then when I met you, you were shooting a D90. And at one point, I think you went to a D800? Um, I did the 7000 first. And okay. then I'm still shooting with the D800 right now. OK. Have you ever considered mirrorless? Of course I have. <laughs> but my budget has not high five me <laughs> on that one. <laughs> My budget said D800, girl, D800. <laughs> I did um, I did rent the Nikon uh, Z7. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Tell me. Oh, it was magical. It was good. <laughs> oh, don't do this. See, I just switched to mirrorless. So I had, I went from the D40 to the D300S, and then I got a D750. But what I was finding walking around the conventions after a while, even with the lightest lens, I was in pain because that's like three, sometimes four days, eight, mm -hmm. 10, sometimes 12 hour days of walking the convention floor and going to different panels. And I was like, this is too heavy. And it was killing my desire to shoot. So Dawn actually suggested I try mirrorless. So I sold the 750 and all the Nikon stuff. And I found one on Craigslist who was selling a Sony A7 II. And I got that in December. So I've been shooting that since December. I will say the only drawback is the battery light. Is it is it battery. low? You know, with a Nikon, you can throw a battery in there, shoot, 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 shoot. For like maybe yeah. have a third of a charge the next day. With right. that Sony, I did mm -hmm. a shoot. And two hours later, I needed a new battery. <laughs> what? So basically so yeah, because think about it, it's a mini computer and it's nice, it's a nice feature, but I know this drains the battery. When I'm looking through it and I'm adjusting the ISO and I'm adjusting the f-stop, it's showing me what my picture is looking like before I even snap it. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a mini camera and I need to get a battery grip, but yeah. Yeah, it's a battery. That's, it's, that's scary. That battery. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely thought about it. Um, <clears throat> I have carpal tunnel. Um, mm. and I have back problems. So it'll definitely, definitely be easier on me to have a mirrorless. Um, but it was a lot to, it was a lot to happen with the, the Nikon mirrorless. Um, and it was a lot, I just didn't know. And the place that I rented from didn't really fill me in on everything that I needed. Like I didn't know I needed an adapter for my lenses. I didn't know mm -hmm. I needed a special card. Like I had no idea what I was doing. And so having to try to transfer, then you needed something special to to upload the images and girl, really? it was 
oh, it was it was a headache. I had to had they were nice at the place that I rented from that they actually um, moved the images onto cards for me. But wow. in the real world, I needed to have the correct stuff to use it. So it was it was a pain, but the images were stunning. Um, being able to see the changes immediately was eye opening. Um, because mm -hmm. I'm a self-taught shooter. So a lot of times my settings, I know in my head what I want it to look like. And mm -hmm. I kind of know what to do with my camera. I know, okay, I want to shoot at F6. And I know at F6, I need this, I need to have this. And then I'll, I'll shoot it and I'm like, oh, perfect, great, let's go. So, because I'm, I'm not a technical shooter at all. I don't use uh, light meters, anything like that. Um, I just kind of go on feeling and kind of what I see in my head. Um, I'm a big dreamer. So if I can see it in my head, then that's what I'm going to create. Okay. Cool, cool. So, and I know you were working on a podcast too. So I know you do some other creative stuff. You said spoken word, you were doing, was it a podcast? I feel like it was a podcast. It, it was, it 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 went to sleep for a little while. <laughs> That's the Did you get tired of that again? I said I was, and I am going to get it back started. And it's probably a good time to do it now, being that I have all this time since I'm working from home, from the mm -hmm. job. So um, <laughs> I, I, definitely, I definitely need to pick that back up just to be able to express um express myself it's kind of a hodgepodge type of podcast so it wasn't all photography it wasn't all just you know my crazy wanky stuff it was everything you know i was able to talk about everything emotions feelings healing manifestations you know sage incense blackness herbs crystals <laughs> everything like it was just a it was just a hodgepodge of everything for me. So I really need to get back to it because it was very therapeutic for me as well. Um, but I definitely ha I'm getting focused. I'm gonna say that. Look, this time off they they um for us for this, for folks who may be watching this this is during the coronavirus pandemic, late March. Um, most people if they haven't been laid off, you know I'm fortunate that with my job that I'm just working from home. Right. I, mean, I work. I work on a college campus, and we were doing rotating telework where one person manned the office, for our suite. And then last Thursday, the president of the institution said we're shutting it down. You got until Wednesday to get your stuff and get going, but we are shutting this down except for you know our students who have no place to go, our international students whose countries have closed their borders. So we've been working from home. But like I said, social anxiety is down. I'm taking a risk. You know me. You met me. I hate being in front of the camera. Right. I hate taking pictures. I, I, I don't podcast. Know I hate, I don't know. I love to podcast because it's just my voice. You can't see my face. So this is me stepping out on a limb. But being at home, I'm like, well, what the hell else am I going to do? Well, I'm doing embroidery and I'm teaching myself quilting. But also, I can do this. <laughs> but you're so cute. You should always be on camera. Cut it out. All right. When this is over, don't <laughs> make me come up there. Look, what when this is over, you should come up here and visit. I need to head that way and visit. I'm trying to get out. Of, I'm trying to get out of the state a little bit more. But anything else you want the folks to know before we wrap up? Um, I I really one of the things that I've noticed is how black women in photography are overlooked and sometimes silenced. Mm -hmm. And I really want us to be a little bit more loud with what we're creating. Uh, and that's something that I'm working on for me because I tend to sometimes shy back a little bit, um, but I wanna see more of us be loud and I wanna see more of us do stuff that we haven't done before. Try it, see, yeah. I think you would be an amazing boudoir photographer. I think you have a great eye. I think it's time for you to be loud. You've yeah. experienced a couple of loud moments. I have. Uh -huh. And it looked amazing on you and you felt good <laughs> after you did. So right. I think I think we need to encourage each other to 
be loud and be proud and be as as vocal and as black and as beautiful and as magical as we can because you never know what'll happen. Look at look at the times that we're living in now. So mm-hmm. um, the best way for me to learn is by doing. And so if we practice being loud and practice being dope and practice being great, I think we could break some real barriers and really make um, black women photographers not be so taboo to the world. And we can actually show them that it's some amazing talent within our ranks and we ain't scared to show it to you. Absolutely. You know, what's interesting, black women, we are great cheerleaders for everybody else except ourselves. And that's right. I'm going to give me a little cheerleading skirt so I can cheer you on as being a wonderful boudoir. <laughs> I just gotta work on my pitch. I'm like, hey, let me take a picture. Got this camera. Go, go. Boudoir, boudoir. <laughs> you can go. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much for sitting down with me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. <laughs>